Right, so I've got all the new rope from uh, Sydney Rope Supplies, I think it's called. Um, pretty cool mob. They were really friendly on the phone and uh, got the order out real quick. And so everything's turned up. We've got new halyards, Spectra, new Lazy Jack lines, a new Furler line. Uh, this is two new sheets for the Screecher. And this is new sheets for the uh, new lines for the uh, dagger boards. And then they sent these two uh, cut off pieces. He said to practice because I got the splicing gear. He's saying you probably need some practice line to help with the splicing. So, yeah. Yeah, so what I really don't like having on my boat is lines with crappy ends on them. See, they're just cut with a hot knife, and that's fine um, from the shop or whatever. But I always like to whip the ends and um, I leave the, you know, leave the melted end, but I whip the ends with whipping twine on all my lines, all my sheets, just so you've always got a clean end. Sooner or later, this melted end is just gonna, the core's gonna pull out and you're gonna end up with a big fluffy thing that you can't put through pulleys and blocks easily. And it just looks shit and it's just, I don't know, for me, when I see a boat like that, with all the lines, they're all scruffy and the ends on bad, I, it sort of goes into my head, well, what else don't they do properly, you know? And I don't want that on my boat. So I'll go through and whip all the ends of these quickly. It doesn't take too long and it just keeps your lines nice. There you go. Red line, new filling line. Gonna put this on now. Okay, sweet. That's pretty good. Um, we'll be able to yeah, trust that line now. It's a pretty scary thought having a furling line that's not at its full strength. Imagine, um, yeah, you're cruising along 20 knots and then a gust hits and it goes to 40 knots and you uh, already reef down a little bit and you reef down a bit more to furl in a couple more rolls and then you get all comfortable and then ping the furling line breaks, your head sail goes out to full size and it's still 40 knots and then you're really overpowered. Um, and you can't just furl it back in because the furling line's gone ping. So you, someone has to go to the front of the boat and try and either get the sail down, which is hard in that sort of wind, or wrap it up manually by just turning the bottom of the furler, which would be nearly impossible. Um, so basically yeah, you've got to turn upwind, let the sail just flog itself to death while you try and furl it up or get it down. So yeah, not a good, uh, not a good look. Furling lines are very important. Uh, it's a bit windy up here, but I'll show you quickly what I'm doing. So on this green spectra line, I just stitched a little loop in the end of it. And I've tied in my mousing line here, this curtain line, which runs up through the mast. That's the one we pulled through with the old halyard. Now I'm going to pull the new halyard through back down to the bottom with that one.
And there you have it. She's back through, running through the jammer where it's supposed to be. And now I've got a functioning jib halyard again. Win-win. Okay, so we moved on. I did a little bit of splicing last night. I didn't film it. It was pretty boring. But um, there's some really good splicing videos on Marlow ropes and Premier ropes, I think it's called. Some really good step-by-step um, -step guides. And so I've, I put a new line on this the furler for the screecher. So it's a never-ending line. It's just a big loop that goes through. And here's the, the splice here. You can sort of see it there. Not that much to see. Um, it stays the same thickness and it should be pretty strong. So I'm going to put this on now, on the end of the screecher. Put the new sheets on the screecher, pull that up and that's one sail done. Okay. So this was the first splice I did, this eye splice. Uh, this is the jib halyard, it's Spectra. Um, I was pretty happy with it, it's quite nice. It could have been a bit smaller maybe, but it's okay. I winched this up uh, as the jib halyard and left it under a lot of tension last night just to stretch the Spectra and also to test my eye splice, but it didn't move, so pretty confident. So obviously while I had this the head sail off and the halyard snap down, I looped the, the swivels. So I greased and looped all them up and made sure they were all turning nicely. And now we're going to pull the sail up and uh, furl it away. Okay. Oh. 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 Good way to keep your ropes alive, don't keep them in the jammer, keep them on the cleat, let that one off. Now it's all the weights on the cleat and not in the jammer. Alright, let's furl the sail up. Sweet. That is the screecher finished. That is the jib finished. New sheets, new halyards. 
uh, re in, yes, took both of them off and washed them on the land, gave them a good scrub, did all the bearings. So, yeah, the front two sails are really good now. The furling line, obviously, that's also new. Um, I'm going to put new lines on the dagger boards, and then we'll have to. One job we still have to do is climb the mast and, and do the, the main halyard. But yeah, all the stuff that broke, we've now replaced. What's happening here? Some stitching on the sun, sun strip. It was all starting to come off and once that starts going, you get a good strong wind and it's going to go and it all goes. Just doing some preventative maintenance. Yeah, as you can see, the stitches here are gone in some places. Some places here also, and probably the thread was not really UV proof because it's all gone the side in the sand. So, yeah, we have a stitching session in the different places of the sun brother. How many stabs have you got? Not so much stabs, that this part is rubbering on the hard fabric and now it's a bit burnt. It's a nice calm day today, so we could just sort of roll the sail out and work on it as it's sitting on the deck. It's quite nice. The, um, the uh, screecher up there, that's a bit past um, stitching up the material is all just burnt and um, down in Tassie or wherever we find a sail maker we'll have to take that off and get him to sew a new sun strip on because that one's sort of a no real point stitching it but this one's rescuable for probably, not, probably probably lasts for another year or so before we need to put another sun strip on it if we keep it keep it good all right guys I am up at the top of the mast as you can see 17 meters up it's actually a bit um calmer up here than it is on Chehalion you know because you've got a bit of a more stable platform but still still rolling around a little bit so I've come up here to finish off the running rigging so I'm keeping the main halyard that was on the boat but as you can see here well I'll change hands see here it's chafe it's chafed through down to the spectra and the thing is it's it's chafing through on this topping lift here and there's no real way I can get around that to stop it chafing, apart from when I'm sailing, taking the topping lift off completely and taking it to the mast. But then every time you need to reef and that, you've got to re-rig it and all, it's just a hassle. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> cut this off, retie it to here, and then put a chafe protection over this part of it. So I've just got a piece of rubber pipe I'm going to stitch over it, and then keep an eye on that. And when that wears through in a year or so, I'll just replace that instead of chafing through the actual halyard. Um, so yeah, it's basically chafed right through the, the UV protection as you can see and we're down to the core. Whew. I'm not going to film too much because it's rolly up here and I'm trying to hang on with one hand and I'm going to try and get this job done. Anyway, I'll pull out this Insta 360 and show you around. <laughs> Okay, whoa, rocky and rolly up here. Doesn't seem like it probably from down there or even on the camera, but trying to hang on with my legs sort of wrapped around everything and then uh, concentrate. I've been sewing with a needle. You can see I've put this chafe protection tube on there and I've uh, stitched it top, bottom, and middle so it won't move. And then, um, yeah, I'm hoping that 
if anything I'd rather have the topping lift chafe than the halyard obviously the topping lift's not vital and it's only double braid and it doesn't go you know it's not really going to make much much difference it's not going to you're not going to lose a sail so hopefully that holds I've unknotted the top I would have rather done a made a loop at the top spliced a loop in there but uh not today I've just done a halyard hitch at the top and um yeah we should be all good on this side oh, time to go down now I've had enough of this guys that's the end of this video as you know from past we're not that good at making uh, DIY videos we just want to go sailing so the work is just got to get it done and don't put much effort into the filming of these ones but we hope you will uh, gain something from this as you see we've got everything basically everything changed out running rigging wise and we're ready to go sailing again so I just want to say thank you very much to all our patrons People who support us on uh, PayPal as well, and all of you who, who watch, like, and um, who are subscribed to the channel, basically. It, uh, yeah, we're doing this for a living. We're um, enjoying what we're doing, obviously, but it, it obviously helps us out a great deal to know that uh, some of you are willing to, yeah, throw a little bit back towards us for putting the effort in to make these videos. It takes a, a few days a week to do these, and um, yeah, we don't make a profit. It all goes back into buying bloody ropes. So yeah, boats ready. Now we just need a weather window and we'll be heading off to Tassie. We'll take you guys along for the ride. See you next week. Bye-bye.